Welcome to your bus tour review. This video will be full of hints that will help you give your best bus tour. Remember that the trickiest part about this tour is learning to pace yourself with the vehicle, so always be aware of your surroundings and use visual cues to help you keep time. You'll start by boarding the bus on the Tennyson side of Alumni Hall. As soon as the bus begins moving, introduce yourself, just as you would on any other tour. Following this, be sure to introduce your bus driver. Then, ask your families if they have taken a lower campus tour and highly suggest they do if they have not yet. As you turn onto Fifth Avenue, you must point out a variety of landmarks, including the Cathedral of Learning, Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall, Bigelow Boulevard, the William Pitt Union, and the Carnegie Complex. It's important to note that the majority of people taking the bus tour aren't familiar with the area, and simply mentioning the buildings means nothing to them, so be sure to describe them. After this stretch, you'll begin entering the area near Shenley Plaza. This gives you a good opportunity to flow into the Mary Shenley Fountain and the Frick Fine Arts Building. You can then begin describing Shenley Park and emphasizing its uniqueness to campus. Be sure to point out Flagstaff Hill and Phipps Conservatory, which is free for students with their ID. Now would also be a great time to mention any other museums that Pitt students have free access to. After this, you'll be crossing the bridge over Panther Hollow and entering into South Oakland. During this portion of your tour, it is important that you keep the family's attention on you because South Oakland may not be the cleanest area, especially on a Saturday morning. However, this is a great place to throw in some fun facts and even personal stories. You can begin by telling your family about famous Pittsburghers such as Dan Marino, the former quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, artist Andy Warhol, and even test your family's pop culture knowledge by mentioning rappers such as Mac Miller and Wiz Khalifa. Since South Oakland is an area occupied mainly by students, now would be a great time to discuss off-campus living options. Elaborate on both South and North Oakland as living options for off-campus. Then be sure to tell your family about the Office of Off-Campus Living and all of the resources that they make available to students. Safety is always a big concern, especially in regards to living off campus, so now would be the best time to discuss it. Start by saying that common sense is the best way to be safe on an urban campus such as ours. However, the university puts several precautions in place to ensure student safety. Tell your families about the Pitt Police and mention any pertinent statistics, as well as Safe Rider, which provides a great transition for talking about transportation around the Oakland region. Be sure to emphasize the fact that students can ride Port Authority buses for free with their Pitt IDs, as well as the inclines and the T, and of course, the Pitt Shuttle system. After talking about transportation options, you can emphasize that these choices are great to reach any internships or volunteer and research opportunities at the variety of facilities surrounding campus. One of these opportunities might be at Winky Women's Hospital, which you'll be passing on the left. This is a good time to talk about the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, or UPMC for short, because McGee is one of the five UPMC hospitals located in the Oakland area. If you want to name the others, give some appropriate rankings and other fun facts as well. Finally, it is important to stress that UPMC provides a variety of options for pre-med and non-pre-med students alike. After you finish talking about UPMC, you may have time to talk about upper campus and its relation to lower campus. If you do, you can also mention some facilities on upper campus that may interest the families. However, after this point, you'll want to mention that you are mostly finished talking about campus and you'll begin talking more about the city aspect of Pittsburgh. To transition into the city, you can briefly talk about Carla University, which you will be passing. This is one of the nine universities in the Oakland region. You'll also want to talk about Carnegie Mellon University and the cross-registration program. If you run out of things to say before your next talking point, it's always helpful to talk about the benefits of having other schools and students surrounding you. As you drive along the Monongahela River, you can point out the beautiful view of Southside. This would be an appropriate time to point out that Southside is only one of the many neighborhoods found in Pittsburgh. It is known as the entertainment neighborhood and is home to a variety of attractions on its main street, East Carson. However, it also has facilities such as Southside Works, Kennywood and Sandcastle, and the Southside Sports Complex. If your families seem interested in the topic of neighborhoods, feel free to notify them that you'll be discussing them more in depth at a later point in time on the tour. As you pass the last view of Southside, transition into talking about Duquesne University. You also want to point out the Allegheny County Jail, and you can always tell the story about how Duquesne paid to have the prison renovated because it was so hideous it was deterring students from coming. Right past Duquesne and the Allegheny County Jail, you'll be crossing a bridge, which happens to be a major fixture of Pittsburgh. This would be a good time to mention bridge statistics, such as the number in the city, the number in Allegheny County, and the official color. Also be sure to point out the T, which is Pittsburgh's subway system that is the shortest and cleanest in the United States. You can transition into talking about the Station Square by mentioning that the T is an extension from the North Shore to Station Square. You can also point out the view of this area as you drive across the bridge. It houses lots of fun things you'll want to mention, like the Gateway Clipper fleet. Following Station Square, you'll be heading up towards Mount Washington. 
During this drive, you'll want to point out a variety of things like the Monongahela incline and explain that there used to be 12 inclines in total. Tell your families about the original use for the inclines and how Mount Washington itself used to be called Coal Hill. You could also benefit from telling the story of how the city hired people to scare coal workers into using the inclines. You will then want to transition into talking about the view that your families have from looking out the right side of the bus. This view of downtown is ranked the second best in the nation, and a lot of Pathfinders like to joke that they are the first. As you round the corner onto Grandview Avenue, tell your families about the price discrepancies between houses, and be sure to point out Lamont, Pittsburgh's only five-star restaurant. You can also show them the Tin Angel, known for being former President Bill Clinton's favorite place to eat. Soon after passing these places, you'll be stopping at the Duquesne Incline. Before you get off the bus, be sure to tell your families that you will be stopping for 10 minutes and that they are not permitted to ride the incline. And finally, do a head count to ensure that you don't lose anyone. As you enter the museum at the incline, briefly point out the picture of downtown that was taken when coal and steel were the major products coming out of Pittsburgh. This picture was taken during the day when Pittsburgh was full of polluted air and our beautiful atmosphere today goes to show we have implemented more eco-friendly processes. After this, take your families outside the museum and start by distinguishing between the various rivers before you. Point out that the rock-based Allegheny River is the farthest away, the mud-based Monongahela River is closest, and that the two come together to form the Ohio River. Because there is such a large amount of information covering this portion of the tour, it is a good idea to start from either the right or left and work your way over so there is some sort of structure to your flow. Mention that downtown is 11 by 11 block business district and name a few Fortune 500 and Fortune 1000 companies. Be sure to point out PBG Place where Inspector Gadget was filmed, the U.S. Steel Building and the reason for UPMC logo, the Radio Tower and Pitt's Upper Campus, and Point State Park and its fountain. You now want to talk about the North Shore. Here, mention the Carnegie Science Center. Some of the museums that Pitt students have free access to with their student IDs, Stage AE, and PNC Park. Many Pathfinders choose to talk about Heinz Field and football games on the bus ride down because running into traffic is fairly common, but we need to do so here if you wish. When you are done explaining Mount Washington, head back to the bus with your families. In order to make sure you haven't forgotten anyone, do a head count as each person heads back onto the bus. Then, board the bus yourself. Since you spent most of your time at Mount Washington talking about the business district, the ride down is a great time to talk about the cultural district and pit arts. This topic will then allow you to segue into talking about movies filmed in Pittsburgh. You can explain the I Feel Infinite scene from The Perks of Being a Wallflower was filmed in the Fort Pitt Tunnel which is virtually identical to the one you will pass on the right. After talking about movies, you're going to make a shift into talking about sports. Transition by asking if there are any questions about arts and culture before you move on. When talking about sports, it is important to mention that our football team plays at Heinz Stadium and that we have free busing to and from our games. However, our basketball team plays at the Peterson Events Center, and since basketball is so popular, it would be a great time to explain the lottery system way of getting tickets. A simple way to transition to talking about downtown and Consol Energy Center is to just continue talking about sports. The city's professional hockey team plays at the Consol Energy Center. This would be a great time to mention the student rush, its benefits, and how it works. Right after talking about Consol Energy Center, you'll be entering the area from which you can point out the Heinz Corporation. Heinz has a rich history with over 57 varieties. However, you'll want to explain how H.J. Heinz originally started the company. Pittsburgh is a city of neighborhoods, and in this portion of the tour, you'll be telling your families about some of them. Each neighborhood is known for something distinctive that you'll want to mention. Use the following order when flowing through them. First, you'll talk about the Hill District, which is famous for its jazz roots. Next, you'll segue into the Strip District, which is a favorite of Pittsburgh locals. It is the location of the original Permanente Brothers and weekend markets. After this, briefly talk about Polish Hill and the location of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, a famous Pittsburgh church. You can then move into talking about Bloomfield, which is a neighborhood known as Little Italy. It even has little Italian flags on the parking meters to emphasize its heritage. Immediately after Bloomfield, you'll find Lawrenceville, which is Pittsburgh's up-and-coming neighborhood that houses the Children's Hospital. The next neighborhood is Shadyside, which has two main streets, Walnut Street and Ellsworth Avenue, so be sure to distinguish between the two. It is also home to UPMC Shadyside. The last neighborhood you'll want to describe is Squirrel Hill, which is a primarily Jewish area with lots of attractions located along Murray Avenue. As your tour draws to an end, you'll be entering back into the area of North Oakland. You'll want to fill this area by talking about Shenley High School. Give specific facts about the high school, like how it was reopened to film Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl. This then allows you to transition to Shenley Farms, which was built in 1905 by Franklin Nicola in order to implement civic, social, and residential areas around campus. If you need a time filler, discuss how professors live in this area and how classes will usually never be canceled because of their close proximity to campus. 
Be sure to finish the tour by telling them why you chose Pitt once you arrive next to Alumni Hall on Tennyson Avenue. Make sure you tell families where the next activity slots are and where they are located before they get off the bus. Thank your bus driver and your families and be sure to answer any last questions they may have.